the paper I've chosen for you today is on explainable AI. Uh, this is it. I actually found it on a preprint server. I don't know if it's been actually published, uh, but I found it sufficiently interesting that I thought it's worth going through anyway. The main premise of the paper, as the title says, uh, it talks about explainable AI, which is a very hot topic in research these days, uh, and also in parts of industry. So you find the likes of Facebook and Google and Microsoft starting to talk about explainability in AI models. Um, but ironically, there's no uniform definition of what that actually means. What is explainable AI? What do we want out of an explainable AI system? And even more interestingly, it's a very polarizing topic as well. So we don't really know what it is, but we know that we either love it or hate it, which is very interesting. Um, so on the one side, you'll find very strong supporters like myself who think that some AI applications really need explainability. And on the other end of the spectrum, you find people going, well, we didn't know how jet engines work before we started flying planes, so why the heck do we need explainable AI? So, uh, which is why I think this paper is really timely and really interesting because, um, which is why I love it. So the topic is, is near and dear to my heart. It's part of my PhD research. Um, it's a fairly short and accessible paper. So it's about five and a half pages, mostly just text and pictures. So no complex mathematics or anything like that. Uh, but it does give a good overview of um, current research. It has a fantastic list of references at the end. Uh, so it's a very good starting point if explainable AI is something you re you're really interested in and want to learn more about. Um, and more importantly, it, it does attempt to bring some light into the darkness. So it attempts to arrive at a definition of explainability. Um, it attempts to identify different types of explainability and when we should use each one. Um, and it sets the groundwork for, for further development or further research if you want to read more. So with that in mind, uh, let's start with the introduction. And um, the authors really start with a question. It's a very long one, but what this really says is, if you were personally accountable for the decisions of a machine in a mission critical context, so it's something that is really important affects people's lives, if you were held accountable for the decisions produced by this machine, would you trust it blindly to do the right thing? And based on that, they start attempting to explain explainability, or to define explainability. Um, and they go to the Oxford Dictionary and search for explainability, and they don't find anything. But they do find the definition for explainable, which is this one here. So it's a statement or account that makes something clear. It's a reason or justification given for an action or belief. And based on this definition, they believe that none of the what we call explainable AI systems currently are actually explainable. And they start explaining why. I'm saying too much explaining this, I know, sorry. Need more vocabulary. Um, so here is kind of a way to try and classify uh, types of AI systems based on their levels of explainability. And they do this based on this picture, which is a picture, I don't know if you can see it clearly, it's essentially a picture of a factory. And the problem here is uh, the system is trying to identify this as a factory. In all three cases, it does it successfully, but it does it in different ways. Starting with the one at the bottom, so this is the first type of systems, opaque systems or black box systems. This is basically where you feed the program an image and it spits out factory. You have no idea how it happened, you have no idea how it arrived at that conclusion, but it did. Um, the second type is what we call interpretable systems, the picture on the, on the top right. Um, and here, it's basically a white box. So you feed it a picture of the factory, and it says it's a factory, but it also gives you the transformation function it uses to say that it's a factory. Now, turns out this is kind of doable in linear systems. So in, in regression models specifically, this isn't massively hard to do. 
Um, in things like SVMs, for example, you can also look at things like the distance to the decision boundaries and stuff like that, and you can, you know, um, call that a type of, of interpretability. But once your system becomes, or your models becomes nonlinear, especially going into neural networks and stuff like that, this becomes really difficult to impossible to do. Um, and then the third uh, kind is what they call comprehensible systems. And comprehensible systems are kind of black box, but when they give you the answer, so when they tell you it's a factory, they also give you a few hints as to why they think it's a factory. So in this case, for example, they will say halogen lights, concrete floor, boxes, machines, so individual items that they were able to, that, that the model was able to detect on the picture. And they kind of leave it up to the recipient or the user to deduce why having all these things in a picture means that this is a factory. Let's look at another example to make this a bit more clear. So let's think about doctors, for example. So you can think of doctors as an opaque system. Um, you can, you know, especially thinking of a scenario where you, someone is rushed to A&E, for example, and the doctor just immediately diagnoses, intervenes, treats, and the patient immediately feels better. No one knows what's going on. No one knows why. Um, by no one, I mean like the patient and their families and things like that. There's just no time to talk, but the outcome is there and it's right and it's good. But you can also think of doctors as a comprehensible system where they provide some high level indications on, on symptoms, on test results, and they kind of give you an inkling. So when you go to uh, a GP or when you go to uh, a doctor in, in their practice, uh, they will have a conversation with you and they'll tell you, you know, because you have one, two, three, and your test results showed blah, 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 then I think you have this. But there's a different, a third level where a doctor can be an interpretable system. So think of an M&M &M session, for example, at, at a hospital after a fatality or something like that, or if they're teaching uh, to new doctors, then they'll do a very systematic, step-by-step, -step, very technical walkthrough of every single step they went through in their reasoning. Why, what was going on, what, is, what was the case presented, uh, why did we arrive at that conclusion, what happened next, and so on and so forth. So these are kind of three views on the same system that uh, can be viewed as opaque, comprehensible, or interpretable. And what we learn from this is really it's your target audience that determines the level of interpretability and explainability that you need. So um, building on that, they also say that this is not enough, that there are additional traits that you need in an explainable system to make it truly explainable. Um, and some of these traits are things like confidence, trust, and safety. So, a truly explainable system needs to inspire confidence um, and trust in its users, um, and it also needs to adhere to certain guidelines or measures of safety, ethics, and, and fairness. Now, what they do recognize and, and highlight very strongly in the paper um, is that this is very subjective. So it really um, relies on the users uh, so confidence and trust, for example, will be col colored by the user's own attitude, for example, towards AI systems. Um, I used to work for a healthcare AI company, and we had a group of doctors that were just completely anti-AI in healthcare. They hated the idea of AI being able to diagnose diseases, for example. And therefore, everything that our systems produced to them was untrustworthy because they rejected the premise in the first place. Someone else who might have a more friendly attitude towards AI will be more amenable to thinking that it's a trustworthy worthy and um, reliable system. So it's, it's very subjective. Things like safety and ethics and fairness vary 
a lot depending on your background, your frame of reference, when it comes to what's ethical, what's not, what's moral, what's not, um, something that is considered ethical here in America, for example, might not be considered ethical in Egypt where I grew up or vice versa. Um, it's again very, very different depending on your background and your frame of reference um, and also sometimes things like your level of education and experiences you've been through and so on. So what do we do with this? So they say that um, based on this, what they would consider truly explainable AI really doesn't exist because current models enable interpretation as opposed to providing interpretation. Um, but they leave it to the user to apply their own knowledge, bias, understanding, which of course is dangerous because it means that um, you can, it means that you can end up with different explanations for the same decision if exposed to different people which you don't really want. You want a uniform understanding of why a system or how a system did something. Um, and specifically, they lack reasoning. They lack a line of reasoning that is objective enough to not subject the interpretation to the user's own biases and background and so on. So how do they propose to do this? Well, they propose augmenting the um, existing comprehensible models with a reasoning engine. And it's a reasoning engine that is um, attached to a domain-specific knowledge base. So for example, if we're talking about the factory um, example here, instead of just saying halogen lights, concrete floors, boxes, machines, we put them in context. So the reasoner will go to the knowledge base which has the knowledge that a factory floor might contain these things with certain levels of, of certainty and confidence. And then the reasoner might create something like the image has halogen lights, a concrete floor, boxes, and many machines. These objects are often present in and related to factory operations. The machine thus believes the image is of a factory scene. And you can apply the same thing to medicine, for example, if, if you're um, recommending a certain treatment, for example, then your reasoner would go to a medical knowledge base and say, the patient presented with symptoms one, two, three, four, their test results were so, so, and so. Um, these were the options for certain drugs to recommend. One of them was safer but less effective. The other was more effective and the patient was really um, in an advanced case, so we had to make the decision to compromise, um, you know, to risk possible side effects for the sake of um, effectiveness, and so we're recommending the use of drug A instead of drug B. So this is a human readable, human understandable explanation end-to-end um, -end of how a system arrived at the explanation that it did. And that's it. This is all the paper says. And um, I'd be very interested in hearing your thoughts and your uh, definitions of what makes explainable AI. Question about your thoughts on the uh, last slide. Oh, sorry. sorry. On the last slide. Um, this one? With, yeah, the feedback loop basically from the reasoner. Mm -hmm. um, is it basing its assessment on the actual decision or is it just giving metadata that says these are the factors that were considered? Like is it tied into that actual instance of a decision or is it just higher level concepts? Yeah, that's my understanding of it, is it, it operates both on, based on the decision itself and also, so it basically takes the decision and augments it with additional, with this metadata, as you said. Okay, so it is also considering that actual instance of a decision. Yeah. So it's mentioning specific artifacts that we're seeing. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. Okay, are we done? Uh, given the complexity of these systems and they're kind of designed, like AI was often used to deal with complicated problems? Do you see people attacking this problem with basically building an AI reasoner to reason about your other AI model 
you know, kind of layering them on top of each other. And do you think that's a reasonable approach given that you may never be able to start with your like base level reasoner that you already understand? I think that's a very good idea, yeah. I've, I've never seen it implemented this way, but yeah, I think that's a very, very valid approach. Anyone else? All right. Yep. Oh, I'm over there. I'm running over. Run! Um, so, uh, so wouldn't it create? So wouldn't that idea create the same problem with how do you explain the explainer's decision or the explainer's explanation? Uh, doesn't that end up in a similar sort of loop? With which one? With this one, this final one? Oh no, the idea that just got proposed in the previous question, uh, as in, oh. uh, if we put an AI on top of the AI to explain the AI's decision, how do you explain that AI's decision? Would it be? Uh... Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, well, the short answer is, of course, I don't know because I haven't seen it implemented yet. But I think um, if you start with something like what they're proposing, so basically combining uh, reasoning with technical interpretation with the specific outcome for that particular test or that particular instance, uh, then you might argue that layering them on top might, might allow you to retrace layers, you know, layers after layers of reasoning until you arrive at the very bottom one. Now, depending on the application, you might not need that, you might only need the, the top layer, or you might need to do um, basically a, a tree approach until you, you reach the bottom. Um, but I don't know, Andrew, do you have, it's your idea. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, that's, that's how I think about it. Um, maybe it's just an artifact of this particular example, but what is the reasoner doing here that couldn't be done trivially by a human? Like just looking at what the black box spit back and what it's spitting forward, you just say, okay, well, this list of things is associated with this thing on the right factory, so I don't know, that must be true. Um, it is a very simplistic example. The danger here is that if you leave that to a human, which is basically what they say a comprehensible system does, is you make that subject to that human's biases and understanding and previous experience. So if you happen, I'm just making things up here, if you happen to leave that decision or that reasoning up to a human who's seen lights and concrete floors and things like that in a different setting and hence associates them with I don't know what else it could be, a hospital, then their conclusion might be that this is a hospital and not a factory floor. But of course, this is very, very simplistic. I mean, if, if you think about it in, in terms of very complex systems and systems that are subject to uh, biases and many interpretations and different levels of understanding, then that's where using a human user to interpret these systems might be dangerous. Does that make sense? Thank you very much.